electricity, but I found a plug. I'm in the meeting with the mayor, the secretary, and she's getting me water. I'm going to act like I'm charging this phone. There's probably going to be a boring interlude for a minute or two, and then she'll come back in and hopefully talk. My back will be to the camera. Hopefully you'll be able to see her. My name's Romance. I'm trying to get a community center here in Allentown and throw a joint for Blind Mikey Peace. just me. That's my tenacity. I was brought in this country as a child and my mom didn't bring me here so I can use anything to keep me at a place where I know that I can do better. I always carry that hope and that's why I was like, able to identify with what you were saying when it comes to hope. I lived in my car and barely had a car but that was the only shelter that I had for three months as a woman by myself. All of my possessions were there. Can you imagine where I had to be to be safe? No. It, it, was, it was tough, and I had to be street smart. And I was raised in an alley within an alley here in Allentown. Where? Oak Street. Oh, okay. The 600 block of Oak Street. Okay, I'm there all the time. That was my neighborhood growing up. And so, my passion for people who want to hold on to hope is exactly the type of people that I want to work with. Because I know once you have that little spark, well, you can do so much with it. With the proper guidance, of course, with directions, with resources. You have to wake up every single day and be like, okay, what, what part of my little agenda, what, where's my next step? Because there are baby steps. It, I had to take baby steps to get where I am. My children now are in their late 20s. And even though they weren't there, I wasn't there for them, part of their, their young life. The relationship that I have with them is intact because they understood the struggles that mom had to get to where she is, right? So even though people are looking at me like, oh, I'm here, you know, dude, what I had to go through, 
What I had to go through and keep integrity in the forefront was very important. Because I might have been poor, I might have been homeless, and at some point really uneducated. But my integrity was, and my self-respect was most important more than anything else in the world. Trying to do this by myself. And so, when you're, when you're sharing with me about jobs, how to obtain it, career link, lack of resources. Dude, I already, like, in my brain, I already know what I can do with all that, the people I have hope and where I can take you. Um, my job has always been to take individuals from here and put them here. Because I was always able to identify what's only between that's getting in the way. Because mind you, that's what I had to go through, right? I, I identify all these things that are getting in the way. You want to lead our most vulnerable community to the next level. Am I right? Okay. Now, there's a way to do that. Do you partner with other entities already in the ground level? Of course. Right? You could. Now, the next step is trying to find what partnerships are authentic. And then I'm going to take advantage of vulnerable folks who are trying to do that. Because let's call it, people do abuse that. Right? Sure. So far, you and I are on the same page? Of course. At all levels, at all levels of human intercourse, where there's a power of play, where there's one who's more powerful mm -hmm. and one who's less, that will always take that natural natural down. But communism is in the So, what I want to hear from you is clearly identify what you want. The only thing I was able to obtain was work. To be honest, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just keep hearing people say, why don't we have a community center? And I said, I'm going to ask somebody else that question. Okay, so a community center. And I don't even know what a community center means. What is the definition of that? What well, actually, that's a very good question. Because a lot of people identify with a mass, something massive, but they don't really know what goes into it. Because it's not just the massive, what's into it. Then we're talking sustainability. How do you keep it? Because what's been happening in a community, in a vulnerable community, is that they ask for something, they get it temporarily, and then it goes away. And people are disenfranchised now. Now they, now they don't even believe that anything good that is being brought to them is actually going to stay. So they don't trust the system, and they don't trust programs, and they don't trust policy. They don't trust none of that because it's there for about a second. Everybody's happy because something was achieved, and then nobody wants to keep it going. When it comes to when it comes to a vulnerable population, and I keep using the word vulnerable, is because these are folks that are really, they're, they're, they're living on hope. That's vulnerability when you're living on hope. When it comes to a vulnerable population, the one thing that they all want to know is how is it going to stay here? Because I'm not going to be the last person that would ever go through this. Because a vulnerable population is not just only thinking of themselves. They already know the struggles of the next person is coming for the next kid that's coming up and is going to go through it. So, work is a way that saved me because through hell and high water, even though I was living in my car, I was taking showers everywhere else and washing, but I had this little tiny job that was at least putting some gas in my car and I was able to eat every so often. Right? And so, work was, is very, very important. Work also allows a person to feel like they're Every day they wake up to do something. And that money that they have in the pocket, that's their money. That's their labor. And it doesn't have to be some grand office job or some, you know, high paying, you go to work looking. It just means that they're doing something for themselves every single day. How do you obtain that? Why is that the question? Yeah, I guess so. How do you obtain that? First, you got to find out what the challenges are per individual. That's a task in itself. Yes, and, and that, that is something that I want to do. I want to, I, I almost, the way that I, what I'm feeling like is I almost want to become a street caseworker. That's what it sounds uh, like. Like, like a yeah. ghetto, free street, like, instead of a, a, you know, like sometimes when you're when musicians are hungry, they'll play on the street for money. Mm -hmm. I'm like a psychiatrist slash caseworker mm -hmm. that wants to help improve your life, but I'm just working on the streets. I ain't got no office. I, you know, I'm just helping you. I'm with the 
Okay. So maybe maybe not. Now I mean I'm right right here, and and I want to coordinate events. You know, like I'm right here. I have a special. I mean, I've not filled it out yet. Okay. I will, but I'm wondering if you can help me facilitate this and move it through because what I'm, what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. here, now here's here's this idea. Let me just pitch this. Yes. I want to have a special. I'm a musician. Okay. So I right there, my musician, and I'm really good friends with a guy named DJ Express. His name's Lorenzo Sanders. He used to own the shop and own him and he called the Underground Set. Uh -huh. He's the first guy to bring He brought the rave scene down in town. He brought Echo, Triple Five Soul, South Pole, he even put the I can get him a DJ. I can get other bands to be there. I want to make create it into a media event if possible so that the morning call and if you get channel sixty nine, what will happen is I'm going to call, I'm going to use this as a, a, a showcase because everybody in the streets cares about my mic here. So they will all come and support this event. The lowest of the low, the grimiest of the grime, they will come, they will act right, they will behave. I know it. Everybody loves Mikey and everybody loves me. I know this can happen. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully I can invite in people who don't come to this community and don't see us and don't have to look at what we go through every day. And it can it can be seen and, and I'm safe to do it. So uh, by helping Mikey, I can help everybody else. What's and Mikey's situation? Mikey uh, is, he's, he grew up with me on the east side. He is one of the first mulatto people I know. He grew up, but for lack of a better term, he grew up as a white boy on the east side. We all had mullets and listened to ACDC back then. Um, and that's kind of what he grew up with. But then, you know, our demographic in our hometown changed. And the, the pop culture, I guess, the environment around town changed, and he changed with it. And he went from being pretty much just, you know, the east side itself went from being signed to a suburb to kind of being really having very inner city problems. As an adult, he's experienced that, and he, I think, like, ten years ago, he lost sight in one of his eyes, and then, like, two summers ago, he was barely, he could barely see out of one, and now he's completely blind. So, and he's going through the same thing, everything that everyone else has gone through. He's going through the same problems. So I said, he can't even see. I, mean, I was trying to help him meet the other people that went down there. And I didn't realize, just watching a blind person eat. They don't, they can't see. They're pulling it with their forehead stuff that's not there. I mean, they're going to the bathroom the whole thing. Does Mikey have medical assistance? I think he does. And I think, you know, it's probably, his situation is probably not as bad as it seems. But it's gotten out of control. You know, and I'll, that's the type of thing where it, 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 I'm not blaming the system. I'm not saying the system is bad. But where the cracks in the dike, where the water falls, I want to try to plug my finger at yeah. the side. I want to try to, you know, Mikey, somebody would have just, uh, somebody would sit down and for two hours, look at his resume, look at his whole life, get all the situation, go through his mail, look at what bills he owes, and say, look, this is this, this, and this. We're going to kick you in the ass. We're going to do it. We're going to get you. We're going to put a search in your mouth, give you a shower, get you some new friends, and maybe we can even get you a job or something good to do with your life, something positive. He's literally a two-hour meeting away from somebody who knows what they're doing, away from that. And there's countless other people around here who are just a little bit of belief, a little, little bit of love and nurture. Mm -hmm. So and another thing I want to talk, discuss with you as... As, and, and this is where I might get a little bit racial, and I apologize about that. But, Don't worry. Um, you know, Allentown, the demographic, when I say the demographic has changed, Allentown went from, that, in the grand scheme of history, Allentown from, went from being a Pennsylvania Dutch city to a Puerto Rican city, mm -hmm. for, the most, for, for the most part. Mm -hmm. By and forth. Now, and growing up as a white man, that was a very hard thing to deal with. Was, you know, I had a lot of reasons to, 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 to not like what I think when Puerto Ricans first been they're a lot tamer now. When y'all first came here, y'all were beating us up and jumping us and wild and crazy. And it was hard to get along with Latinos at first. And it was a struggle. But in, 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 I've been doing it now for 32 years. And I've come to realize this city, Latino, so I hope they're my crook. Nobody's going anywhere. They're here to stay. They're here to live. They are now out in town. We can deny them. We can act like you're going back to the Bahamas or where Puerto Rico or wherever you claim from, but you are here in Allentown, and while you're here, we're going to try to make you have the best American experience. And the way to save Allentown, I think if I was going to work for mayor, I would do it almost all in Latin. 
I want to save the Latino people. I want to help them behind in a big, in a big scheme of things. When I look at all the conspiracy theories and what I know about a government and human existence, and what I've been taught through my education, I really do feel that the government has given Latinos and especially Puerto the whole history of what's going on with the Puerto Rico being not a state and a state and a commonwealth. That's the dirty-handed thing I think of in mind, to me personally, in itself. That way, the Puerto, I, I feel like Puerto Ricans are victimized. Latinos are victimized, and not so much to the point where it's an epidemic, where it's a human rights violation. But I think they're being held. This system is designed against them, and I want to get them through that because I think when they do get through that, we'll have a better America. I'm sorry. I want to try to try to help my. You have a lot on your plate. I have a well, I have a lot of. I'm an emotional guy, so this is to, to say a speech like that takes a lot of emotion to deliver a public speech. Don't shy away from being from you. Yeah. Anyway, well, my point is, more than probably any other black call you're ever going to be, <laughs> I care about the Latina and Latinos. I can tell. So, and I think that's the key. There. Latinos are the key to the future right now. I, think the key. I, don't like, I don't like intersectional politics. I don't like basing things on the color and making labels. But for lack of a better terminology, I think that if we're going to say Valentine, we're going to start thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's good money. I see a Latin community, I, I see Latinos becoming the fabric. They are the salt of, the, of America right now. They're doing the hardest jobs, and they, they're slowly <laughs> interweaving and they're becoming American. No, I'll rock a Puerto Rican flag shirt. I, I will right now. Well, even. the Puerto Rican festival is next Wednesday, next, this Sunday coming up. Yeah. Puerto Rican? Yeah, the Puerto Rican festival. Oh, I didn't even know! Yep, and the uh, festival is at Jordan Park. The we get lit up here. Yeah, I won't be here, but <laughs> just so you know, it's next. It's, it's next uh, Wednesday. Uh, so you do have you do have internet access. I do. Obviously, um, these are some based on what you were saying. This is my feedback. Okay. Um, you have a Facebook page. I do. So, via the Facebook page, there's some organizations that I want you to be a part of. Okay. Very well. And I'm going to tell you why I want you to be a part of these organizations. Because then you will be... Because then you will be connected to the masses on what's happening in Allentown and the Blue School. Just be a part of these organizations. All right. Um, one of them is the... Is the it's called Judy? I gotta get the actual name. Um, da, 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 da. I'm not a fan of Facebook, but I know its purpose. And let me see, let me get it. It just had a meaning last night on gentrification. Uh, they did it at Grace Episcopal Church in Okay. And that was last night. Um, it's called the Allentown Coalition Economic Victory. It's a long name. to be a member of, of this organization. They are amazing, incredible, die-hard, loved humanity group people. And when I tell you that's who they are, when I see you, when I hear you, I can see you being a member of Good. these folks. This is what I want. They invest their time and energy on addressing the economic disparity in the city of Allentown, addressing gentrification, addressing a lack of support for people with no income to less income. That's who they are. And they're a group of vibrant, young, die-hard activists that, but they sound just like you. But they're doing this work. 
collectively in the group and they have partners, right? And the reason why I think this particular group is going to open doors for you, one, they're connected to everybody in the office, in the area. Okay. Their reputation is impeccable. Okay. Even though they they practice activism and they push the envelope on what's going on in Allentown, they do it in a way that is so that is constructive instead of destructive. If you know what if you know what I mean. Yes. There's a way of doing things, addressing issues without creating enemies. Okay. And that's who they are. Okay. So what I would like for you to do is get on Facebook, connect with them, and tell them that you want to be part of this group. Okay. They're welcoming you in with open arms. Because they love, they want people in there that have love for humanity. And so, secondly, I believe in the power of networking. Because the networking opens other doors and other doors and other doors. And other doors. And that's where you being missing. You being missing, being in places where you're meeting folks that are listening to you, that are not only listening to you, but they can say, I can use this. I can have a more for my organization because he knows. He knows the struggle of folks and he knows how to get them from point A to point B. But you need to be in those circles. Yeah. I understand career link and all that, that's wonderful. But let me tell you something, the power of networking is something incredible. Because now people are opening doors for you and not because you passed an interview. They're actually watching you, they're listening to you, and they get to see that you are about something. And you're going to invest every ounce of you on your mission and vision. I will. Right? Yes. See. That's how you start. Secondly, I can help you with this. That's not a problem. Awesome. Not at all. Awesome. Um, secondly, um, I think through meeting certain folks um, and sharing the need of the people that you're trying to represent, they're going to open other doors for you and provide the type of resources that your friends and the people that come to you, especially that you just said young people or the people that could be your children, that's heartening, you know, to, to live in an area where economically it's growing, but yet you're, you're invisible. Yes, yes, that is, that, that, so, that is exactly what we are feeling. Okay. And they meet, I think, every other Wednesday or once a month. I don't even remember. Um, but I want you to connect with them. I, I want you to be able to go to their meetings. I want you. They are always looking for vibrant people. I am vibrant. Yes, you are. You're very vibrant. You are start being evil. Absolutely, you are. And I caught that from the first time I met you. So. This is a group. Secondly, um, the other group, since you want to work with the Puerto Rican population, they're always looking people to join their initiatives, to join their group. They're not limited to only Puerto Ricans. Right. Anybody who's willing to, to push the cultural cause. And, th and that's that's one thing. I want to be a special agent. For, I want to get through doors that other people can't. There's certain doors probably that Puerto Rican can't get through that I can. Right. Preservation. Look them up on Facebook. Inbox them. Um, both folks, you tell them that I refer to you. Very good, Taziana. You, you, man, this is what government is supposed to be about. I walked in here. I said, I want to help. I want to participate. You were, uh, by, as vivacious, you were of nothing. Rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> and thank you. I appreciate it. Wow. Thank you so much. And you tell them that I, in this way, they know that I'm, they, they know me, and they know that I don't ever refer people and put my name attached to them unless I believe them. Okay. I will do that. I, I will, I have a man in my order. I'm going, and it's, these are both on Facebook, correct? They're both on Facebook. I Facebook don't have meeting. their personal information because I just always attended the meetings and, you know, um, but they're all they're looking for people that are just ready, yeah. ready to go. Okay. You know? Well, I'm I, I'm I'm going to take your word on this. I'm going to get involved. I again, I got I didn't fill it out yet. I went to the paperwork. 
So, well, let me ask you this. You, you have a lineup already in mind, right? All right, so let's break this one down. Break down right here. Okay, so your lineup is, tell it to me. All right, it'll be... Um, you have a DJ already. I have a DJ, and it'll be me, it'll, it'll be Richie Romance. Okay. It'll be a band called Gemini Rain. You have two DJs. No, Richie Romance is me. Yeah, and but your band. DJ? And I'm gonna have a DJ there. Yeah. So you're gonna have a band and a DJ. I'm trying to. I mean, at this point, like for for, for like right at this point, if I have to plug in my speakers and my guitar and be five different bands and call it that just to get people there, mm -hmm. I will. I don't know who will. And I am part of a, the musical community in Lehigh Valley, mm -hmm. and when I say I'm doing something for yeah, community. you were on Lehigh Valley Live. Yes. I did, I did, I did, I just did the Ugandan in Ball Hockey mm -hmm. uh, benefit concert two weeks ago. And you played a lot in Easter. Yes, yes. I know the joke. Oh, okay. All I right. have to do my homework. All right. So, um, but, so anyway, I, uh, I, I, uh, 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 what were you saying? I, I, I think once I put this together, you know, maybe it will flop, but I think the other musicians will come out and join, so the lineup will probably grow. I don't know right now, because I'm just, I, I'm not going to tell people to come if I can't put it together. Okay. So this is what I would like for you to do. The city supports any initiative that is about unity, education, and celebration of life. They'll be right there yeah. to support it, right? The team that actually uh, runs the city events, the city events page, and is a, is a team of these amazing young ladies who are just, they're incredible. And when I tell you that they go to bat, to support something positive in our city, they go to bad. But one of the things that they want first and foremost, before anything, they want to know that you have already confirmed your participant. Yes. Okay. So far, I mean, confirmed right now is my band. I have a spoken word poet, and I, I don't have a confirmed the DJ, but I want to get a DJ. Okay. So one of the things is confirm the participant. Okay. Secondly, um, identify identify the cause. Uh, because I know that you told me, but you still need to articulate okay. the cause okay. behind the event. Well, I'm, I'm trying to make it zero. Mm -hmm. I think I can make the cause zero. No, no, no. The Oh, the cause. Oh, okay. okay. C A U S E. Right. Okay. Identify the cost. Secondly, when you choose the date and the time, uh, articulate as to why. Because we don't just do things randomly. There's always a premise behind. Do Do I get? Is there a choice in like? like I will. I'll take any. You know, what I mean, like at this point, if I have my choice, I would like the Arts Park or Millennia. Arts Park. Perfect. Like I said, a stage, like some sort of mock stage or something up there. It'll just resemble a, a, a venue. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Venue. But I think Arts Park would be. Yeah. I would love. Everybody loves to hang. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's peaceful. Yeah. I don't know why they don't do yoga there every morning to yeah. get people start off. Yeah, that, <laughs> you know what I mean? I would love to do stuff like that, man. Just do something free for the um, community. That's entertaining. And one of the questions that they're going to ask you, uh, 